Amekwafia. Amekwafia. Monica is spelled M O N I C A. Amekwafia is M A M E K O A F I A. I spell Amekwafia again. A M E K O A F I A. Monica Amekwafia. My God. And this is the woman we're talking about. Miss Ghana 1957. That is her. Not slim, not flat stomached. My brother, my sister, no makeup. And when you look at the face, it tells you the real beauty in a woman. My brother, my sister. Now, deeply, she was also splendid. And we'll be telling you more. Because of her, the Volta region got the nickname of the Monica number nine. Because of her, Many, 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 many women in her days all became bold enough to speak out and also to participate in the Miss Ghana competition. How did it all happen? This is the story. Monica. Yabo. Yabo. I'm a coiffure. My brother, my sister was born in Alavano on the 30th of June in 1934. Yes, 1934. That was where she was born. And my brother, my sister, she was born to a man who was very, very, very strict. He was called Augustus Amokwafia. Her mother was called Anastasia Apau. She was born in Alavanya in the Transvolta Togoland in the Gold Coast. Hey. And listen to the interesting thing. She was a seamstress. Simple seamstress. She was contacted and told that she would make it. Miss Ghana. Kwame Nkrumah encouraged all the beautiful Ghanaians to come out and represent their regions. It was a way of celebrating Ghana, the independence year of 1957. Somebody hinted her that she should be part of it. She said, but I am a seamstress. She said, it doesn't matter. Come and represent the people of the Volta. Come and show them how pretty we are here. And the way you are, you will win the competition. She said, well, I will represent. And then she did. She went through the preliminaries. She was selected. And then she became part of it, my brother, my sister. Oh, my God. Very pretty. Now, she was very eloquent. White teeth. And when she spoke, oh, my God, the whole hall went quiet. She had a voice that was extremely sexy. She had a voice that could silence any other voice. And when she walked, the innocence with which her feet touched the ground went Monica Amekwafia. My brother, my sister, on the day of the competition, Lord God have mercy, she was only 22 and a half years old when she went for the competition. Oh my God. She walked nicely. She spoke nicely. She was so knowledgeable. And her number was number nine. My brother, my sister, she was number nine. That was her number. She was contested number nine. And it was from her number that people from the Volta region are called number nine. Some people argue that it was the ninth region to be created. No, this was the reason. At the time, it was not even called the Volta region. It was called the Transvolta. My brother, my sister, she wore the number nine contestant number. Oh my God, have mercy. 
And when she came on stage, she was so eloquent. People loved her. And when it came to the dances, oh my God, she could do almost every dance from the vault, right from Agbaja, all the way down to Palongo. Oh, and even more. She danced. And she was also well endowed at 22. Her body was not slim. She was endowed like the African woman that we know. So when she danced the bobobo and shook from left and right, the whole hall went ablaze and everybody tipped her for the crown. She wore the crown. My brother, my sister. Now listen to the interesting thing. She won the crown. And when it was announced that she was the winner, oh my God, the whole of the Volta region went agog. My God, the Volta region was seen as the bevy of beauties. Better still, the land of the bevy of beauties. My God, it sent a lot of tourists to the area, especially those scouting for young ladies. Remember, she was only 22 and a half years old. When she arrived in the Volta region, they carried her shoulder high, like you can see in this photo. Very, very high. They did not only carry her shoulder high, my brother, my sister, they also sang and danced around her. My brother, my sister, this woman will never, ever be forgotten in the history of the Volta region and the history of this great nation today called Ghana. My brother, my sister, now when she won this competition, the first thing she did was to go to the Volta region and represent and tell everybody that we have brought the crown here. Her father was extremely proud. And the young ladies in the Volta region were so excited to see one of their own carry the diadem. Mm. My brother, my sister, the day that she arrived in the Volta region, it was all about dancing and enjoying themselves. They danced. People from the Volta region came from different, different, different parts of the area, the Transvolta. They came over to celebrate this great black woman. Oh my God. A daughter of the land. This is 3FM. Talking about Monica and Mekwafia. Oh my God. Dancing all over. The Voltarians were so proud. Oh my God. That this beautiful woman had made them so, so proud. Love to her. As carried by the Daily Graphic. Producer, find me that. The Daily Graphic published that 100 men had proposed love to her in the Volta region and the whole of Ghana alone. They had proposed marriage, not even love, marriage. She declined all these 100 marriage proposals and said, well, I'm going to England. Maybe if I meet somebody there, that I feel that I'm in love with, I will go ahead and marry the person. But for now, I am only 22. Today, her statue stands right there in Hohoi. When you go there, they built a beautiful statue for her. And there, my brother, my sister, people look at this beautiful thing and they remember Monica Amequafia. She died on the 24th of June in 1990. At the age of only 55, she left behind about six children. My brother, my sister. Mm -mm -mm. Today, my brother, my sister.
twice. In fact, she had two children from her first marriage. And then she married a Ghanaian diplomat, one Henry Kofi Mara, in London, in the United Kingdom. My brother, my sister, and that marriage gave birth to four children. So in all, she had six, as you were told. But in 1966, when the Kwame Nkrumah government was overthrown, her husband lost his job and they had to relocate to Ghana, where she continued to do her seamstressing and some other such business. My brother, my sister, mm, 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 mm. she continued like that, encouraging women in the Volta region and beyond, getting them to be very, very serious with their work and putting value on themselves. She remained a, a, a housewife until she died on the 24th of June in 1990 at the age of 55. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Today we remember you, mommy. Mommy Waebi, very first woman to be crowned Miss Ghana at the age of 22 and a half in 1957. Oh, mommy. Messi Wayabi, oh, Damil Fabie. Do it, 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 now that you know what we do do, be an any or lay a mini of our fair Zunaka Gane Mezaka Yini. Yea, Pabango Bokaya Nufifia, Yanu Kaina war. Banaehu, a bed then. Lele Anjima singer Bekune, Lele Anjima singer Berry. When she won the contest, 100 men proposed love to her. As carried by the Daily Graphic. As you can see here, 100 men proposed to Miss Ghana. And when you read the story, my brother, my sister, it's an interesting story. Today we remember you, wherever you are. Baba Nawo, Baba Nawo, Baba Nawo. Tu tu gavi, tu tu gavi, Papa mula homeo, Mama mula homeo. How naima vinye, kanumba nungpo. And my name's certainly Black Rasta the Liar. The young girl, the conqueror, the champion.